If you were to die tonight, do you know where you would go? Brady and I have joked around about this phrase in the past, but I think for a lot of people, this is the contingent question that informs religious belief. It's a daft oversimplification of biblical soteriology, but it's the mantra that has drawn in generation after generation since the Reformation. From Pascal's wager to the Roman road to... I'm getting too theological. My point is that fear of death, or more so what's on the other side, has been fueling growth and devotion to religion for a really, really long time. On today's episode of The Life After, we're going to talk with my friend Zach. We'll get into the details later, but Zach has had a couple of encounters with death in two very different contexts that radically changed the way he looks at the world, and I wanted to pick his brain on that topic. We're also going to talk about the deceptive side of the salvation prayer, fancy youth groups, and the Gone Wild subreddit. Oh wait, I think we edited that part out. I guess you'll have to find out. Chuck, it was weird to hear you at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, I'm. I, you know, I'm. I'm uh, making my 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 place in the in the <laughs> finding your place in this world. I'm di- yeah, I'm finding. Are you my... Michael W. Smith in it? Oh God! Do you remember that song? Yeah. I'm... <laughs> hey, I sent you a text this week, and I wanted to talk about it. Um, the text yeah. was, I was, I was at work, or I was working out, or something, and I and I had this epiphany about. Um, I think I said something to the extent of what if, okay, so growing up in the Christian church, we always had the highs and the lows. We'd call them the mountains and the valleys, like the times where we felt really good spiritually, Mm -hmm. that our walk was good. These are such triggering phrases, you know, that where our walk with God was good. We're walking through the garden or we have those times where we feel like we're just like a shitty person in the valley, right? In the valley. Yeah. And so we have mountaintop experiences at church. That was such a big thing. I talked. We talked about that a lot. Yeah. Like you know, you remember when you would leave church camp, and you would be like, "This is a mountaintop experience." It was always a Thursday. And there nights. was always that the the youth pastor or whatever would always have that little bit about, "This is a mountaintop experience," and you feel great. But when you get back to the real world, to the real do you world, remember we, could, that? we could take it home with us. We could take it home with yeah. us. And and what determines if we could take it home with us is how much time we spend in the Bible or whatever. Yeah, 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 for but, sure. But I, I, I came to a realization this, this week, Chuck, what if a lot of those like mountaintop experiences and valleys are um, just like the ups and downs of some of the depression and mental illness that we that a lot of us have like right. for me i know i've been i've been diagnosed with anxiety and and, yeah. and depression yeah, yeah. and I, I try to be as open about that as i can because i feel like there's such a stigma with uh with mental illness and i think it's absurd right yeah yeah um, which is it's a, it, the, that stigma is totally different when you're in church and when you're not in church i don't know if it's better or worse but it's different you know it's different absolutely yeah. well i feel like a lot of mental disorders or sexualities that are out otherness within the church it always has like a weird or dishonest or just kind of like imp- incomplete um, definition given to them mm-hmm. you know what I mean like for instance when I came or whenever I was gay uh, when I came out as gay excuse me uh, there was a lot of talk of like well, you're gay because your dad was not involved or your mom is overbearing mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And it's like, no, I think that some people are just gay. We're just gay. Some of us have depression. Right. And some of us that are really awesome, we're both gay and depressed. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like me. You, you, you got the, the super pack. So I text you this week, said, yeah. what if, what these if highs all and of those ups and downs? I remember that. What or if just those ups and downs our, are, are anxiety and depression coming and going or, or, or other or, attributes of mental illness or right, just, right. Or like or manic, just life. manic and depressive or, or, you know, that kind of thing or just, yeah. Or just the regular ebb and flow of life. And we tried to, we spiritualize them. I think that's what I did is for me, I realized that in whatever way that my, my perspective was looking through these lens, um, things that really were probably mental disorder and probably needed some help or medication or therapy or something I looked at as, well, I need to try harder. I need to pull my up, myself up from my own bootstraps and become right. more 
uh, more of a better Christian, so I have less depression right. or whatever. But I didn't call it that at the time. And so now that I'm older and more wiser, and it's not just because I left the faith. I think that I probably would have come to these conclusions if I would have continued in the faith. I would have realized, oh, crap, some of these things are... Are actual, like, mental... Yes. Like, like yes. Like, that need treatment, like, proper proper attention. Exactly. And, you know, what also is interesting is is I would often, often, especially when I was a kid, interpret... Uh, depression or 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 like more difficult seasons of my life as me being far from God or close to God. So it was like if I was doing if I was really happy, I was close to God, and if I was really if I was really sad, I was far from God. And then I would it, that was really perplexing to me because I would be like praying or 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 reading my Bible a lot, but I would still be sad. Yeah, absolutely. And I was, I, f- I felt like I was doing something wrong. So I have these journals of just prayers, and I used to call them like my prayer journal. I have so many, I have but I look, several full books of, of Do you know prayers. what I call them now? I realize they're just some of my shame journals, because some mm. of them were like me crying out to God about wow. being gay. Yeah. Uh, you know, I didn't want this. I feel so distant, blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, I look back at it, and it's like kind of a weird monument that I built for myself just to remind myself of how lost I was as a kid you know sure, yeah no I, yeah but I'm glad was, to be out of it and you know and, and right. have like better treatment and understanding of I, you know I, I, I picked why. up I don't want to you know get too into it but I, I did I, I stumbled upon one of my prayer quote-unquote prayer journals recently and it had this like in red ink on the front like uh like please do not please don't read this you know because it was like <laughs> mom dad honestly honestly though my mom gave it she she found it and she gave it to me with a sticky note on it that said I never read it <gasps> And I was like, oh, I respect her. Man. She's a, she's a lovely, she's a lovely lady. What time in your life did you, did you, write this was, this? this was probably, I was probably 13, 12, 13, 14, maybe. So it's pretty young. So th- what were you going through at that time? Yeah. So uh, that's actually a good segue. Cause I, um, that, what that text made me think of, uh, as far as, uh, men- mental illness or, or psychology and that kind of thing is. Cause I was really interested in your response. Cause all you said was like, Oh shit. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I was like, I had to think about it for a minute, yeah. and uh, and this is actually a really pivotal part of my story. Um, is that I was, and I, I didn't even get into it in, in episode one, but um, for many years of my life, um, I was a I was a compulsive pornography user. Okay. Um, some I guess some people would call it a porn addict, but I don't scientifically that's not. Between really the word addict and compulsive, there's a huge difference. Right, right, right. And, and I, th- I think we've talked about this, and we're going to get into it more in, in later episodes. In a future episode yeah. on sexuality. Right, yeah, we're going to get... Coming we're soon. We're going to try to get really into that, but... Um, I struggled with I struggled with that for years, quote unquote struggle. You know, like that's what that's what Christians... We all hate that word, absolutely. Right, yeah, yeah, we all kind of hate that word now, but... Um, in my 20s, it wasn't until I was, I was probably 24, 25, I actually went into recovery for it. And that recovery process was a huge part of why I I left Christianity. Ironically, it was actually a Christian recovery program. When you say recovery, was it like a facility that you? No, 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 no. It was it was a it was a recovery group. It was it was a lot like AA or something. Okay, okay, Um, okay. And in that group, like I I started started studying the psychology of addiction and the psychology of, of compulsive use. Uh, in general, you know, particularly with pornography or sexual, uh, you know, behavior. And um, I learned, you know, uh, I learned about triggers. I learned about cycles. I learned about uh, how your own, how your trauma and your, your childhood and, and your wounds all play into why you, uh, you get into compulsive behavior. And uh, in that process, it, it, it's it. In, I mean, literally in like three, six months, a year, um, I started to see like like vast improvements in my behavior. You wow. know, like I started to I started to deal. I started to actually deal with the behavior, which I still wow. see as as okay. negative. It wasn't like it wasn't like I was knee deep in Christianity, and I you know thought that it, that like looking back now. I, I still see it as, as negative behavior. It's not like, you know, like I still hold the belief that pornography is an inherently bad thing or anything like that. But the, the way that I was using it was, was bad. It was negative. It was okay. like hurting me. It was hurting my relationships. Well, but I started to improve like so quickly. And, and I realized after probably not until a couple of years into recovery um, that, uh, that 
15 years of, of praying about it and, and reading my Bible and studying and, and understanding theology and going to church and confessing and all of that uh, didn't really help me at all. And six months of modern psychology changed my life. Wow. Right. That is huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That is huge. Yeah, it was it's it's this huge thing and and it and it made me realize like the Bible doesn't teach you um the Bible doesn't teach you about how, you know, your abandonment issues because one of your parents was emotionally unavailable plays into your, you know, uh your you 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 create a band-aid and you end up with a compulsive behavior. And then it doesn't also it also doesn't explain to you that um, that you, when you feel ashamed of said behavior, you, you know, try to make up for it by just cycling right back into the same behavior. You know, it, it doesn't do any of that. Like, the Bible just kind of says like, this is bad. Don't do this. Don't do, don't right, do it. Right. And it doesn't, it doesn't tell you why it just says because you're a, you're a sinner or because you're wretched or, you know, that, that kind of thing. And it, wow. That's amazing. It doesn't give you any insight into your own behavior. It doesn't give you a, it doesn't give you a, a way out. It doesn't give you. It doesn't help you understand what your triggers are. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all super important stuff. That like, is so interesting to for me. Any, that... Anybody that is caught in any cycle of negative behavior, like that, that understanding that is really important. Tell me the time frames again. How long were you trying to combat your... So I would say that I, I started compulsively using porn when I was probably 13. Okay. And I would say that I probably s stopped or, or learned how to control it mm -hmm. when I was 27, 26. Okay. And most of that was not in re in the process of recovery. So, like so 13 years. Three and then... years. I was in recovery for three years. Okay, okay. And completely, you know, learned learned to understand and control my behavior. And, and the place that you went, and the, the place where you got help was a Christian facility or Christian. It was, yeah, yeah. Answer. And it was, a, it was, a, it honestly, it was a really positive experience. It was really great. And I still have relationships with a lot of the, the men that were involved in the group. I cannot wait for the episode where we get to talk about that more in depth. It's coming. It's going to be good. It's Looking coming. forward to it. So this week, um, we have a friend of yours on, which is a little different. Um, I've haven't yeah. met I haven't met him until today. Right. He's, he seems all right. Right, right. Do you have a story you want to tell us? Or a question you want answered? Do you need advice on how to handle family members who are upset at you because you're wrestling with your beliefs or leaving your religion? Have you experienced some weird religious shit that you need to tell people that might actually get it? Then contact us. Go to thelifeafter.org, all one word, and click the Contact Us page. Or Facebook us at facebook.com backslash thelifeafterorg. Or email us at info at thelifeafter.org. We would love to hear, hear from... <sighs> Let's do it together. Okay. One, two, three. We'd, We'd love, love to, to hear, hear from you. you. Or when you email us, send us a voice recording. We really like that too. Welcome back. Um, I'm here with Chuck and our guest, Zach. Hey, Zach. Hey guys. All right. Welcome. I want you to do me a favor. Um, walk me through what life was like for you as a Christian. I want to hear your story. Sure. Uh, would it, um, would it be helpful just to kind of maybe do like the, uh, I guess the traditional, uh, this is how I got saved kind of thing. Do you want to, you want to give us your like testimony? testimony, my testimony? Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, in, in, in high school, um, so it's probably, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, 14, 15, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a friend, uh, and his name is Jake. Uh, he invited me to, so we were, I guess we were kind of like the skater kids, you know? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Everybody, yeah. yeah. I guess that's our generation's, uh, hipster, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we were kind of like the skater kids and, uh, you know, church seemed like the furthest thing. Uh, no, n nobody, first off, nobody wants to go to church, right? But, right. um, so, you know, my, uh, my friend was like, Hey, he's like, you got to come to this place. It's got like a half pipe in the back, uh, in, in the, in the back of the church. It's right. got this, you know, and I was like, really? I mean, that sounds pretty cool. You know? And was this, was this first this Christian was, church of Florida? This is first Christian okay, church of Florida. Yeah. So I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with that church. I grew up in that area. So yeah. yeah. 
so so essentially uh jake and i started going uh, to that church um and you know we on on the weekends they would they would kind of uh, break out they had this they had this um church service i guess you could say called unplugged um and i don't oh, yeah. think i don't I've think that, I, I think i might have even i don't think it was once. apostrophe d you know like i think right, it, it i think that. it was actually spelled correctly You're okay okay yeah yeah. Uh, yeah eric clapton called he wants his church back yeah right <laughs> <laughs> so we we started going and uh you know it really it really kind of um it really kind of spoke to me uh i didn't have a particularly tough childhood or anything growing up i mean i had you know i had issues just like everybody else i think you know mm-hmm. but um there was something about it that just spoke to me you know jesus was this i mean it was made out to be this amazing uh this like perfect the, a, a, a catch-all a fix-all right you know yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah and and I, I was just i was really attracted to that and i was like this sounds great you know what do i have to do mm-hmm. and you know the the typical response is all you have to do is you just have to say this prayer and receive jesus into your heart and i'm like well mm-hmm. fuck man that sounds piece of cake that sounds easy you know that's a good deal it's a good it's a good deal i'll shake on that yeah exactly and it's like you know uh, but you know the underside of that is like and you only have to change your entire life yeah, right you also have to give up your life yes. yeah yeah no, so don't, you don't yeah yeah <laughs> I n- i've never really thought of it on those terms but yeah it's like wait it's all you have to yeah Really fast, that the TV show that I was in, the the, the cable Christian sitcom, there was right. a scene that was written before I started writing a lot of it. It really bothered me because they said something to the extent of like, well, all you have to do is pray this prayer, followed up by, well, that's not all you have to do. You also have to give your entire life. And it's like, right. What? Right. How is this not bait and switch? It, and right. It, it even was as a Christian, I had problems was a bait and switch. with with the, the vocabulary. And I struggled with there. that for a long time, honestly, and I couldn't put the vocabulary. As a matter of fact, right now might be really the first time that I've really clearly understood why I wrestled with that, and it was uh, you. You. It's simple up front, mm-hmm. and then there is. It's wildly complicated after that, and I understood all of those complications because I lived that. You life. felt it absolutely right, and I was like, "Yeah, I want. I wanted it to be simple for people, and I tried to make it that way because that's what I was taught. That's how we wanted to but sell it. But I knew it. that there was all well, of yeah. this subtext. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and you know that, right? You know, you you know that, and 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 that's what makes it difficult. It's what made it difficult in you know sort of the later years for me to try to tell people about it because mm-hmm. it, because I knew I was like, mm-hmm. you know, so all I got to do is tell people this, but in reality, I, I'm so li- I'm lying to them, right? You know, I have but, a question yeah, for you guys as as you guys were like really active Christians. Did you ever worry about people that just became Christians? I don't know about you guys, but what I used to do is like if whenever there was like a new person that joined a church and they asked Jesus in heart or whatever, I always felt this really weird sense of just angst and worry about them of like, oh man, anytime they can just walk away. And it felt like it was on me or it was like on us as a community or something. Did you feel that way or was I alone? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. It was, uh, it was this, uh, it was an anxiety about, yes, it's about bringing, bringing somebody else into this culture that i think i subconsciously knew was damaged yes probably and i and i would worry about it but i couldn't really put the vocabulary to why i was worried about it i i would even i I would even go so far as to say uh the language that was used uh you know in in in, at least in my experience at the church was you know sort of uh you you know you, you have a i guess you have a convert uh and then, and then, you know, there's pressure to make a disciple, you know? Okay. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. So, oh, you know, God. that's yeah, a word yeah, I've yeah. not heard in a long time. Yeah. Disciple. Wow. You know? Yep. And so, uh, that I guess would be my version of that anxiety is like, um, did I do a good enough job such that this person would become a disciple and not just a Christian? Mm-hmm. Wow. You know? Mm-hmm. Oh wow! And yeah, so, you did, did I say it? Did I do it well enough? Did I? Did sure. I? You know, give the message. Am I message making myself well available enough? enough? Am I yeah. supporting right. them enough? Yeah. Yeah, and and yeah, I, I don't think I ever felt like I that, like I did a good enough job. I always felt like an AA sponsor. Yeah. Um, that I was trying like to help them. Way. I was trying to help them get off their 
their addictions. Their sin. Their, their sin. sin. Right. Yeah, and trying to. Yeah, but make you didn't sure. really have the resources to to do that. I was a teenager. Right. I was fifteen. Well, yeah. I think I think and too. even and even <laughs> even so, if you're not a gifted leader or or a, yeah. or a you know if you're if you're if you're just not gifted in that way you are going to struggle to do that. And then you feel a certain amount of guilt about not being able to do it. Dents your guilt. Yeah. It's on your back. It's on your shoulders. Yeah. I, I think too, it's, um, it's also, uh, a, a very a poor understanding of what sin is and, you know, mm-hmm. so, but, um, just to kind of, uh, just kind of finish it out. Um, so, you know, I, I accepted Jesus into my heart at this church, um, you know, at, at, at one of these, um, uh, unplugged services, okay. you know, and it was a it was sort of a joyous experience, you know, it was, it was very, very cool. Um, and I, I'm sure that there were things like this all around the country, right. Where there, where there was like, you know, things that were, um, attractive to the younger generation. Um, I mean, your church had a high half pipe. It had a half pipe, right. It's amazing. Right. Yeah. Um, right. so, so, you know, um, except to Jesus, um, and then, that, and then there was a small portion uh, of of my life where, um, I'm, I'm so I'm I'm ex- extremely extroverted, mm-hmm. um, like I can talk to anybody about anything. But so so, you know, uh, I had some friends who were not Christians, and they started um, they started drinking, uh, you know, around. Um, you know, around that time, 16, 17, sure, stuff sure. like that. Oh, girl, did you have a talk with them? Mm, no, I started drinking. Oh. Yeah. See, and- I was the asshole who has, like, I remember specifically when I found out one of my friends was drinking in high school, mm-hmm. and I pulled him off to the side in church. I was like, hey, we need to have a talk. With yeah. It was, and so, you know, uh, this was kind of my first experience uh, of, you know, disappointment and whatever. You know, I definitely, I was the one that got the talking to. Mm. Um, oh, right. Yeah. But, you know, essentially uh, what, what it came down to was um, I, you know, accepted Jesus and I I got into the church culture. And then I started going out with these, these folks. Um, and it was quite a hike, actually. Um, and then I would trek out there and I would drink with all my friends. We kind of uh, had a garage. There was a, there was a lady, uh, you know, an older lady that kind of supported all this, you know, okay. she was just like, oh yeah, it's cool. We all called her mom, you know, like kind of right, right. thing. Um, and, uh, we really got into that. Um, and, uh, I remember uh, there was a there was a girl I met through some of these people, um, and her name was Julie. Is Julie? I, I imagine she's still alive. There was some attraction um, there, and you know that was guilty. Like I felt really guilty about for, that for just being attracted. For just being attracted Not even like to yeah. her, and you know, I mean, like attracted. In in a in the way in a quote unquote lustful way. in a quote unquote lustful way you <laughs> right. know I mean like you know I, saw, I yeah you know, saw her and I was like oh, like I really want that I don't know what this feeling is sure, but sure. I want that yeah um and so so um we're driving somewhere I don't remember and we're just like hey you know do you want to do you want to do you want to do this and so we pull off somewhere and um and somewhere in 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 this in this town and we uh get naked start making out um and i like i guess this is the first time that i could technically say that i had sex sure. but um th- was this in a car it was in a car you went from no sex to car sex nah man i don't know damn that's how yeah no that's how it usually that's actually how it works for for normal teenagers brady oh yeah, I would, I, I would, I, I would say that I would say that it's probably related to the shame. Honestly, the shame and the guilt of of the action. Sure. Like I wanted to hide like it. You, as, you had to hide it, so you went out of, you went away from everybody. Yeah, away from in, the camp in a, in a hidden in like, a, some ves- vessel in some place where I knew that you know the only person that would see me would be God. Right. You know. Um, or a highway patrol officer. Or a highway patrol officer. <laughs> I love how it's like, <laughs> I was so ashamed of sex, so the first time I did it was in public, right? <laughs> Come on, Zach. On a dance floor. <laughs> uh, no, so, so I mean, essentially, uh, you know, what, the, what, this, what this comes down to, I don't even know how to say this, like, without laughing. Sure. I, so I, uh, I guess, put it in once. Right. And then uh, instantly felt, shame 
like or shame, guilt, uh, in 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 the worst way possible. Right. So, uh, you know, I but I don't know, took it out. Um, <laughs> right. But uh, and then and then we stopped, like like full stop. And I was right. like, hey, I gotta. Like I gotta go. Like I have to go somewhere. And it turned mm-hmm. out that there was a there was a special like worship session of unplugged that night. Okay. I drove straight yeah. to church and yeah. rededicated myself. And that's the date. So that was on your mind the entire time you in were in that session, entire- like in that sermon and lecture and all that. Yeah. Wow. The, 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 that service was tonight. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. well, I'm saying, you no. Know, whenever you were in that session, you were just sitting there in church, knowing. I just did something really horrible and you just had that guilt and shame. Yeah. And, and you know, that was the, the, and that really turned me. I mean, that was the, that was the day I was like, that you like really took the Christian. I was like, Jesus come into my heart, please save me. I know I did this horrible thing. I'm, you know, I am a terrible sinner person, you know, please, you know, take me back, please. Right. But that was that was the that was the catalyst that that put you on a trajectory that for several years after that oh, you would be super Christian. Absolutely, right. that was it. That was the moment. Um, right. You know, uh, December sixth. I mean, I you know the day. So, right. Yeah. Hmm. Wild. Yeah. Wild. Um, and so that really that's when I that's when I took the oath. You know, that's when I said you know that I'm, I'm gonna be. I'm going to be the best Christian I know how. Wild. So let's take a break. Um, when we get back, we're going to uh, we're gonna get into, uh, from that point, after several years of, of being immersed in church culture and following that, uh, what that looked like, and then, and then what led to Zach leaving. Sounds good. And we'll be back. We have a link to the Facebook page on our website, thelifeafter.org or you can search for The Life After on Facebook, or just go straight to facebook.com slash thelifeafterorg. And we're back here with Zach. Um, so Zach, uh, you you know, we just talked about um, your entry into Christianity, yeah. right? Which happened mm-hmm. when you were a teenager. Mm-hmm. And uh, after that, so we, I kind of want to, I kind of want to ask you some questions about sure. w- uh, the, the type of church culture that you were involved in and ultimately how that sort of led to you exiting. Um, so you were, you were involved in a, in a charismatic church for a while, correct? I, like, I was, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, before, I mean, before that, the church that you mentioned earlier, the First Christian Church of, right. of Florissant, uh, is non-denominational. And that's something I kind of never really got, uh, was that... Uh, it's a denomination. It's its own denomination. I went to their college for a semester, and even the professors were like, yeah, we say we're not denominational, but it's actually a denomination. Yeah, it's they like... They have a course set of beliefs. It's, anyway, it has, but, so yeah, uh, t- transitioning, uh, I can, you know, I became uh, the the youth pastor left that church, um, and uh, and along with him, kind of the energy. Mm-hmm. Um, so okay, I was yeah. sort of like, um, you know, I'm kind of shopping around now. I'm really looking for another church. And so um, a friend of mine uh, was going to this uh, this church called Church Alive, which no longer exists. So okay. I can so I can say sure. that um, yeah. So it was a it was a um, charismatic church, uh, you know, full on speaking in tongues, um, you know, uh, slaying in the Holy Spirit, all that stuff. Right, right, right. So. Yeah. Uh, like very like loud services, like yeah. A lot of people sort of talking, doing their own thing, praying out loud. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, did they have Did they have like ribbons and flags, or was it not quite on that level? Uh, no, it was not quite on that level. Okay. I did. I did, however, go to a couple of churches that were that were like that. Uh, you know, around that time, and I was like. Ironically, I'm like, this is a bit much for me. <laughs> right, right. And it's it's interesting how we we draw the. I remember being really critical of. Uh, I was studying uh, Mormonism, and I was like real critical of their system of beliefs. But in hindsight, I'm like, it's not that. It's, it's not any different. weirder. Uh, yeah. So I went. I went through a weird charismatic phase for a while. I shouldn't say weird, but it, I did. Um, I would go to like conferences with some of our friends, Chuck, and mm-hmm. I would go by myself because I, I danced 
during the services. Oh, yeah. It was a strange time yeah, in my yeah. life. It, Weird, strange time in my life. It really, uh, there, there is certainly an aspect where doing that, you know, brings you closer to God. Um, you know, obviously not, but there there's something about it there's something about sort of just that experience letting just, go yeah it, it right. just you know, release of it's the it's the same it's the same thing it's like hey guys come you know come out and dance with us well i don't like to dance well you know just close your eyes cut and loose. do it it's cut loose, fr- do it's whatever. Foot, it's the plot of footloose it, it literally <laughs> <laughs> it's charismatic churches yeah yes. it totally is so what, so anyway. what happened to this church what was important about this charismatic church for you uh i mean really what really what it came down to i i think what it is is um it it, it awakened uh an aspect of me that i didn't get from the other church um which is which is really just um the other church was calm it was tame it was uh you know even with a even with a name like unplugged um, right it was it was it was just sort of um it was bland would you, you know? say it was white people-y <laughs> yeah <laughs> very very much so. so and that's something that i that that you can only say with hindsight though you know sure yeah I mean, you know absolutely yeah. yeah but yeah very very much very much white people um so this new place was kind of you were able to experience things in a different way and it felt more real to you absolutely yeah it, it felt it felt like i was um you guys talked uh um I, I, I believe earlier about uh you know kind of the ebb and flow and, and being high and, and, and not, um, and I think that, uh, this was definitely one of my spiritual high points. Okay. Okay. Like, like, and, and, and it was continual, right? Like I knew that I could go to church and I could get that high, Mm -hmm. you know, I could get the, I could get the feeling. Do do you feel like, and this is kind of, this is kind of a, a theme for me Sure. is, um, there's this song lyric that, that stuck with me that really played into my deconstruction process that mm-hmm. uh, it essentially, I won't quote it exactly, but it essentially compare. it says that manna is a hell of a drug. Mm-hmm. And I, I that stuck with me. I thought it was interesting at first. And then I kept repeating it and repeating it. And it was like, uh, I realized after a while That's that... That's fucking profound. Like that it's, actually... It's crazy, right? Yeah. Like, like, I, like you... Like God, manna, manna meaning, you know, being a reference to the Old Testament, sure. the food that, get, yeah. that God gave the Israelites. So w- there's an aspect to which church is uh, is a drug that we that we can return to when we're not feeling good about our lives or that things aren't going right or, uh, or you know, we need a pick-me-up, right? And... The question is whether or not God is a drug is the question of is God ultimately good or bad for your your life, right? Um, is it, it does it ultimately have a negative effect on you or not? And I mean that in a in a drug addict, like a negative sure. sort of like a heroin or like a yeah. something like that. And so, did you feel like you could? Did you feel like it was almost enabling you? Like it was almost like. However your week went, you didn't have to fix your circumstances. You didn't actually have to fix anything about your life. You could just go to church on Sunday and feel feel better. Absolutely. Sunday, Wednesday night, Tuesday. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah, all yeah, not just Sunday. Yeah, not right. just Sunday. Yeah. And that was a, that was definitely a, a staple of that particular uh church um culture. Right. Is like uh yeah, you know, it's not just Sunday anymore. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. But um, but just uh, you just kind of um, just kind of go, going forward. Um, I'm I'm just gonna kind of move along here. Is that if, that's if, fine if with that's, me. If yeah, that, if that works. Up? So uh, so I I I met a gal. Um, you know, uh, in in that not in that church. She was actually part of a different church. Mm-hmm. Um, during that time. Period. During that during that time period. And uh, we, you know, fell in love, um, and I got engaged. Uh, you know, we got. How old were you at this time? We, uh, it was twenty twenty. Oh God! Okay. Okay. Yeah. 20, yeah. Me, Pretty young. Twenty. Yeah. I knew what love was at twenty. Did you, Chuck? 
Yeah. <laughs> Probably more than I do now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So you guys no, met, you guys were in church twenty years old? Uh twenty years old, yeah. And uh, you know, I I you know, super romantic. I, you know, wrote her a poem and in, in, in each uh the first letter of each uh sentence spelled out, Will you marry me? I mean like it was right. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. We're fucking romantic, man. No, uh, so so we got engaged, and um, this actually led to me uh, meeting uh, her father. Um, you know, I kind of I kind of um, believe I asked, and he was uh, uh, very Presbyterian, very um, very staunch in in that in that world. Um, one of me, one of you. Yeah, yeah. That was me. I was a very staunch was it guy. right? Yeah, like, you were like Calvinist yeah. Presbyterian. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of Are Brady's background. Is tuliping all over the place. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, uh, meeting him and, and, and sort of getting into conversations with him, uh, was, was really eye opening for me because mm-hmm. it was like, wait a second, there is an entirely, I mean, not just, not just from this unplugged place to this charismatic place where, uh, we, <laughs> where we spoke in tongues mm-hmm. but now there's this other thing that's it's it's almost i mean the way that it's, it came it's very heady it's very intellectual scholarly is the scholarly. word the, the, I, okay i wanted to say intellectual but i didn't want it to sound like i was saying no that the rest of you were dumb no 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 because okay. presbyterianism in particular is very like there's a lot of focus on high education yeah and and uh in exegetical study and that kind of thing. absolutely so, yeah. yeah yeah so um so so i, I just kind of learned you know i was like this is this is this is so different you know this is so interesting mm-hmm. um and uh and it, and it really started me down this this path of of questioning uh the the verses um, in First Corinthians talking about um, uh, speaking in tongues. Oh, okay. And yeah, it yeah. really started me down this, right. this this thing. So now you're now you're in a place where you're con- you're conflicted, and I'm conflicted because I'm... you have an experience that says one thing, mm-hmm. and then you have your intellect is saying something else. Yeah, yeah, and 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 so you know uh, that really kind of started me down this uh, this path of doubt. Mm-hmm. Um, and, right. But we didn't end up getting married. Right. Um, she 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 went off to college, and and you know I've never spoken to that that man again. Really? Uh, no, I mean we didn't. To her dad. Okay. To her dad. Yeah, yeah. And we did. I mean, we didn't really. Um, we didn't continue a relationship or anything like that. But you know, I mean, he had a he had a pretty profound effect on me. Um, uh huh. But we. Uh, so that's where my doubt really. That's where my doubt really took. Uh, took root. Right. Okay. Um, and yeah. it was, I mean, it, it's, I'm, I'm really struggling to kind of, uh, to put it into words, how powerful doubt can really be uh-huh. when you are so sure of something. Right. You know, it's, um, you, you have to, part of you has to die. It's a yeah. grieving process. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and 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 you may not necessarily know that. Not going into it at all. No, no you just wake up one day and you are you are beyond the point of return. Mm-hmm. You're, you've tipped over the edge. It's but it's, you're not ready to let go of where you're coming from either. It's kind of like uh, I don't know if if uh, you know, I think a, you know you guys mentioned anxiety a couple times. I don't know if you've ever had a situation where you like you woke up uh or you you just some some something changed and you look around and you feel like nothing's real nothing you mm-hmm. know like i'm in this i'm i'm in this this weird meat sack and it feels super you know weird and i don't know you know i'm not i'm not doing something, a good job something something drastic about your worldview has changed and you're yeah. not comfortable with it yeah yeah and you're just like and and yeah. you, you can't I and mean, you cannot deal with that it's something yeah. that you shouldn't have to deal with. Sure. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's all. yeah. Um, Being a young person, I don't think you should have to deal with that. Um, mm-hmm. But right. like I said, that's where that's where um, that's where my doubt started. And you know, after sort of these years of service, and I mean by by service, I'm you know, I mean like, you know, I, I would go to the mall. I would I would hand out tracts. I would uh, mm-hmm. talk to people. You're and one would, of those people. I was one of those people. Right. right. I was one of those people. Fuck. Too. You know. Yeah, Brady was one of those. And, and it really on I. I I look back at those times it. and I'm like, ugh, really? But yeah, but it no. was sincere at the time. It was sincere. Yeah, at the it was time. absolutely sincere. It, 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 but it was also embarrassing. I mean, like it was sure. one of those things. Right. It, 
it's 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 a it's kind of a tough journey to talk about you know uh you know where doubt starts and then and then kind of jump into you know where it where it terminates rather right um right right but um but there's a point right? there absolutely is a point and i think so, it's important to get and that's there. something that me and brady we like to ask people what was what was your breaking point what was the point where you said i don't think i can believe this anymore I, you know. this is heavy are you guys ready I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. Okay. We love heavy around here. <laughs> well, I, yeah. Um, uh, so um, my best friend died in 2010. Uh-huh. And uh, how he died uh, is, is difficult. Um, so for the very first time, I wanted to take a vacation out of the country um, with my friends. Uh, and so it was me, uh, it was me, uh, another friend and, uh, him, his name was Kyle. Um, and my, my friend and I, uh, John and I were, uh, we are scuba diving certified and, and that's something that I, uh, love to do. Scuba diving is awesome. But essentially, uh, what we, what we did was, uh, we saved up some money. Um, we, uh, bought some plane tickets uh, to Mexico. Uh, my parents have a timeshare down there so we can kind of go, you know, we, whenever we want. Um, it's really nice. Um, but, uh, Kyle was the only one who wasn't scuba diving certified. And so we're like, you know, you don't have to get certified, man. It's totally cool. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to go down there and I, you know, I think, I mean, there's introductory classes. We'll, we'll be able to go with you and whatnot. And mm-hmm. uh, he's like, no, he's like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to find somebody to kind of teach me. And he, he, he found some guy, um, at, uh, I think it was one of the, one of his local bars that, uh, that, um, had a small business that did that. And in the course of him getting certified, uh, he, there, there, there's a, a small step in getting certified where it's, uh, you do an indoor a certification, and then you do an open water certification, mm-hmm. and open water is just basically out in any you know any you know ocean lake uh, ocean lake something like that. Sure. Um, and during his open water certification, uh, there was a, um, a malfunction or uh, negligence of some type, and he drowned. Mm. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. and so, I mean, not even, not, not even touching on the fact that, uh, you know, had he not met me or uh, had we not talked about right. Mexico or had we not talked about, um, scuba diving, uh, you know, he'd still be alive today. Right. So, so that, go- that goes through your mind still. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Zach, I'm so sorry. Oh Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of tearing up right now. Yeah. Um, and okay. So, to this day, you you carry that as like as like a guilt or something that might be your responsibility. I know that it's like, not my fault. You know. Okay. I'm, like, I mean, you know that. Yeah. But, you know that. But uh, yeah, the thought's still there. Yeah, it's definitely still there. Um, but so, um, essentially, I say that a lot. Sorry. Um. Okay. We, so I was the first one to find out about it. Um, Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I had to kind of tell everybody else, all my friends and my friend, uh, my friend John and I went on the vacation anyway. Can I I ask you really quick? How did you find out? Um, so he had to go, um, he had to go to, uh, this quarry, a rock quarry. That's usually where, you know, out out in the Midwest, that's kind of where we have, that's kind of what we have. That's kind of what we use to Mm -hmm. do open water certifications. He, he went out to this place, uh, out in Illinois somewhere, excuse me. And, um, he, you know, he went there, we had, uh, brunch plans the next day. Talk Mm -hmm. about something that's super white. Um, we had brunch plans the next day and we, we didn't hear from him. We didn't know where he was. We didn't know what happened. Right. And so, uh, he wouldn't answer his phone. His car wasn't at his house. We, you know, we, 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 me and a couple of other, other friends, we were just like running all around town, not knowing what to do. What the fuck do we do? Where, where is, where is our friend? Right. So... Uh, my friend, my friend, uh, uh, she has, she's, she's brilliant. She's, you know, fantastic, 
Uh, she's just she's just a genius, and she goes um, search online, search the area, search his name, search that you know s- something like that. Yeah. And I remember, uh, I I pulled up this blog um, that somebody had written, some someone uh, that was in the class, the class with him, and yeah. like uh, the blog post uh, was uh, just the title was his name was Kyle, um, and I was like wow. Yeah. Fuck. Right. And so I read it, right? right. And, and I'm just like That's uh, how you found out. That's how I found out. Yeah. And, and I, that I evidently mean, had a lot to do with you walking away from your faith. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I want to touch on that when we get back. Um we're gonna take a really short break. And Zach, I want to ask you when we get back about how how that had to do with like the ending of your your faith journey. Mm-hmm. And um I relate with you. Okay. Uh, my best friend passed away um, mm-hmm. in the middle of my divorce and all of that. And it was the hardest thing I've ever experienced. Um, so yeah. it was like trauma upon trauma. So I completely understand like how hard that must have been for you to an extent. I mean, I, every situation is different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. 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 Oh, I get it. Cause I've been there, but no, no. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I totally get it. Yeah. Um, so let's take a really short break. When we get back, uh, we'll talk about that. The Life After Facebook page is a great way to get in touch with other religion survivors. Also, we like to post interesting articles on there. And it's a good way to get a hold of us. And you won't need a concordance to find us. <laughs> we-, <laughs> we have a link to the Facebook page on our website, thelifeafter.org. Or search The Life After on Facebook. Finally, you could just go to our URL, facebook.com slash thelifeafterorg. Welcome back. Thank you for coming back after the break. Um, Zach, we were just talking about your friend who who drowned, who passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously you, you mentioned it because it's it's one of the last parts of your 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 faith journey of something that kind of ended that faith journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you expound on that a little bit more? Yeah. Um, so uh, Kyle was uh, I wouldn't say staunch, but I would say he's pretty he was he was he was an atheist. Um, and and you know, what's the best way to say it? Um, I had been on a downturn uh, for years, and I mean, I, I I would say that I you know I would I like if if pressed, you know, I would say yeah, I'm a Christian. So how many years between when you talk to your ex fiance's dad about the intellectual side of everything to where you are now with your friend passing away? How much time was in between those two? Ten years. Ten years. So I mean, I you know, I had I had I, I guess ten years, ten ish years of like faithful service, you know. But and but so, also in that time you were you were kind of starting to doubt. I was like, doubting the whole time. Yeah. Oh, okay. Absolutely. And you're yeah. and you're in in your if somebody says yes, are you a Christian? You're answering yes. My answer was yes. But you're but you're not necessarily feeling. I mean, I, I you're I, going through the motions, maybe. Yeah, and I know that. <laughs> I know that uh, maybe maybe uh, you guys talking about you know sexuality being um, a different episode, um, but sex actually has a lot to do with my uh, mm-hmm. my my journey as well. Deconstruction, yeah. deconstruction, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, I mean, I was I was I was dating women. I was having sex, um, mm-hmm. and so you know, um, I wasn't being faithful uh, to the Lord in that way. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and you're 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 probably finding that your life is not in fact in shambles like you, you maybe were taught it would be if yeah. you went that down that path exactly so, yeah and yeah. I yeah I, I have a um, so so you had ten years of yeah. of believing and you would say you were a Christian but mm-hmm. but you were also doubting at that time mm-hmm. and here you so, are hitting a huge life situation of your friend passing mm-hmm. how did you respond to that what was kind of your mindset and what led you away from the faith after that tragedy i think i was trying i was trying to come to terms with what just happened in my life you know mm-hmm. uh, wow. until that point until that point i i had never known anybody um who had died who had passed away mm-hmm. i mean at a, at a young age at like a young age absolutely. yeah yeah i mean you know i guess it's rare. What's, what is that that's uh seven seven years ago so mm-hmm. yeah yeah. I mean, it was like late twenties, I guess. Right. That's yeah. when my best friend passed away when he was like twenty eight or twenty nine. Yeah. I mean, my friend was thirty six when he died, and so we, there was a pretty big g- gap between us. But mm-hmm. but n- nothing you would ever expect. No, my God, no, no. Um, 
but yeah, I think I think uh, if we were to really sort of dive into it, um, he had. Um, I mean, he he was an atheist, and he had a lot of uh, a lot of books. A lot of he was he was sort of an intellectual atheist. Mm-hmm. Um, had a lot of books about it, um, and we talked quite frequently about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, and he was he was very kind. You know, he, he was he wasn't like I can't believe you believe in this god sure. shit. You know, I can't, you know, um, he was just a like a, like a, a passive observer. You know, like right. uh, he was just a. A, a great human being. Um, so I mean, bad so, things happen in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Bad things happen to Christians. Bad mm-hmm. things, um, but 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 even in the Bible and the Christians, they don't look at these bad things as oh, there can't be a God because this happened. Sure. What what in your mind was was working there towards making you walk away from the faith? Then I think it's just it was something. Uh, well, a, a good friend of mine, a good friend of mine, uh, attended a, a Bible college. He went into Bible college uh, as a, as a believer and came out an atheist. Um, and he had just recently graduated, right around the time mm-hmm. that um, Kyle uh, had passed away. And uh, I actually met Kyle through him, mm-hmm. and so we started to talk about it. And um, and I and I was I started asking a lot of questions, and I was like. Mm-hmm. What, what does it mean to say that I don't believe in God? Like, like, you know, I remember, I remember, uh, I was driving one night, and I called him on the phone. Uh, these, uh, these, these devices that you can talk to people on, right? Uh, <laughs> Listen to podcasts. On. That's that's right. Yeah. Um, so I called him, uh, you know, on the phone, and I said, uh, I just asked a lot of questions, and I was like, what, what does this mean? I, I don't. I'm struggling here. I don't know. I don't know that I believe in God anymore. And, right. and, you know, he was just really kind about it and, uh-huh. you know, kind of, kind of helped me understand those feelings and those thoughts because he had just gone through them. So it's kind of like your, your, it was kind of like Kyle's legacy was this, was this, uh, this deconstructing of, of absolutely faith yeah. or, or like, yeah, it was like, his passing forced you to say like, well, what did he really have to say? What was his, yeah. What was his mission or what was his, uh, his story? Yeah. Did you find the Christians answers inadequate? Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, nothing, nothing that anybody could tell me would make that pain less devastating. Mm -hmm. We, we all had a very difficult time with it. Um, we, (laughs) There was um, a, a week, about a week or so, uh, right around the funeral that we all call uh, like Black Week, mm. and it was because we don't remember anything that happened. We were mm-hmm. we would go to we kind of like we went to his favorite bar. Sorry, I, I feel like I didn't answer your question. Uh, that that, that um, were Christian answers not adequate, and uh, I would say that. Whenever Christians talk about death, uh, it doesn't ever, it never felt real. It, it always felt like it was sort of this fictional thing. And I think, not as a result, but I think the reason why it's always sort of, it always feels like it's a fictional thing is because I think to them it is this, it, it's, 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 it's passing into the next. It doesn't, it, yeah. It doesn't, right. it, it, you know, yeah, right. it, it's okay to be sad, sure. But, um, you know, if you were, if you were truly, if you were truly a Christian, you would be rejoicing, you know? Right, sure. But uh, it's, it's a different, death means something very death different. Death means when something you, different. When you believe in an afterlife and when yeah. you believe, yeah, when yeah. you believe in a, in a, in a happy, you know, meaningful, fulfilling afterlife. It's different. Absolutely. And, and, you know, um, and, and you as a, as a, somebody that was, that was doubting this belief system yeah. didn't have that comfort. And, and part of, for me, part of that doubt, part of doubting, um, you know, as a result of, uh, of Kyle's death, uh, was, was a lot of conversation, a lot of deconstruction, a lot of thinking about, um, hell, heaven, sin. What are these things? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I, you know, I think I texted you uh, something that that was sort of um, really meaningful to me. Um, if I was a good Christian, 
and you know let's say kyle wasn't Mm -hmm. um kyle Mm -hmm. would go to hell and i would go to Mm -hmm. heaven Mm -hmm. a friend of mine put it put it the best way that i have ever heard it said and he says i don't want to go to heaven he says because i refuse to dance on the roof of a slaughterhouse Mm. and the way that that kind of you know that 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 means you know it's just like it's like yeah you might be you know on the roof praising god but beneath you is this yeah wow is this horrible horrible a lot of implications i mean we can sit and talk about heaven that could be that could be yeah but really i mean the more we talk about the heaven the more hell becomes reality right well yeah we can we can rejoice that we heard the way but then you have to think about all these Africans, right? Because I mean, most people in the in the world narrow is the path. Have not been <laughs> right, right? Yeah, no, no. But seriously, so I mean, awful. most of the world has not been exposed to the gospel, or if or if they are, their culture doesn't doesn't. Te- but there, there's always little there's little answers to justify all of that. Oh so yeah. Like, oh yeah. Well, it's written in our hearts, or the, I've heard of you know there's there's tribes that have had dreams about the crucifixion and they yeah, all that stuff let's it's be let's be real let's it's, be real for a moment it's a lie. We're, we're not just talking about decades we're talking about centuries right. of of people not hearing millennia yes uh, thousands and thousands of years of people not being exposed to the secret message right. that i used to believe would save you and keep you for eternity mm. um, right we're not just talking about a day. We're talking about eternity. Yeah. So th- there's so much heaviness to all of this um, that comes to our mind whenever we start talking about death and mortality. Uh, so speaking of mortality, uh, I one of the one of the more pivotal and maybe the most important to me uh, part of your story uh, for this podcast is uh, is your uh, your fight with kidney disease Mm -hmm. one one of both of your kidneys failed um both both kidneys failed so you were you you confronted death can you can you expound on that a little bit like what exactly happened yeah um (laughs) uh so my my kidney disease uh, uh specifically is called um iga nephropathy uh and it's a it's a big word that just means that there are um, these uh, these things called nephrons in the in the kidney, and yeah. uh, the uh, IgA, uh, the A part of that, is, means that the immune system just decides one day. Out of, they're they're literally the medical science doesn't have an answer for this. Uh-huh. Just one day decides that it's going to start attacking that part of the kidney okay yeah. so it's foreign all of a sudden so your body was attacking your body was attacking itself and so uh in a matter of months actually my kidneys uh failed they went from a, a good percentage of functionality to like 13 percent functionality right wow right so you you've at this point you've you've deconstructed your faith you've you've left the faith mm-hmm. and you literally you you could have died you literally could have died. Maybe should have died. Yeah, I mean, honestly, um, yeah. Uh, uh, this without without medical science being at the place where it is, uh-huh. I would have died. Right. I mean, um, without dialysis, uh, you know, which you know, in in the grand scheme of things, is relatively new technology. Yeah. Without well, and yeah. even and even with medical technology, there's still a chance you could. Have oh, died. oh, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, you yeah. know, there, 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 there were slip ups. There, there could have been, yeah, there could have been a bunch of different ways that I could have legitimately just passed. Sure, yeah. And so you and and we sort of talked about this before. Uh, like, you, like you've had this experience as a, as a Christian, and you understand Christian culture, and then you understand you've you've had five years of experience as a non Christian at sure. this point. Did you ever, I mean, did you ever, like, feel uh, uh, the need to pray? Did you ever call out to God? Did you ever, like, say, like, oh, I'm, I'm, uh, save me, you know, I essentially, like, right, right. did you, did that, yeah. I guess, did that Christian instinct to, to ask God for healing or anything like that sort of kick in at any point? Uh, and I, this, uh, it seems odd saying it out loud, but yeah. no. Right. Um. I was so certain 
uh, that I did not believe that there isn't a God. Yeah. Um, that I didn't, I didn't think that praying would do anything. Uh huh. And so I didn't pray. Right. You know, I relied on my doctors. I was very open with them. When they would come in to talk, you know, I mean, doctors are typically, um, they come in and they want to talk to you, get to the next patient or whatever. And I would keep them for a while and I would talk to them and I just, you know, um, you know, I understand that you have a whole, you know, semester of your school that's about bedside manner, but I want you to kind of tell me what Be the realistic. fuck is but, going I mean, on. Th- yeah. This is the only time you're going to have this, you know what I mean? Like be in the hospital and with this disease at this time. Yeah. So you wanted to be heard. You wanted to be understood. Absolutely. And, yeah. And appreciated. So yeah. it makes sense. I, this is interesting to me and, and I guess m- even more than interesting, maybe kind of profound. Uh, one of the, one of the biggest reasons that people s- join religion or stay in religion is because of the, the fear of the unknown or maybe not even the fear, but just like the sense that there might be life after death or there might be, you know, we were just talking about heaven and hell or there might be judgment and you, and you essentially you confront, you had to ask yourself that question, mm. right? Is there something after this? Yeah. Like you literally had to, had to say like, if I die from this disease, what's going to happen to me? Mm-hmm. Uh, so for, for someone that's dealing with doubt, that's still in the faith or that is in the, in the, in the, the limbo, mm-hmm. maybe where you were for that 10 years, yeah. where it's sort of like, I believe this, but I kind of don't, but I don't really know. Uh, it, what would you say about, about, about that experience and that, that, that facing mortality to, to somebody that's in that position? Oof. If anything, I mean, you know. yeah, uh, I would, all I would say is that honestly look look at what's happening to you honestly and face it face it as a human being don't shy away from questions ask all the questions i mean because they might be the last questions you get to ask mm-hmm. you know um you know the the struggle with kidney disease and cancer are very, two very very uh, similar things. You know mm-hmm. you, there's a lot of similar drugs involved and everything. Okay. And uh, I would just say it, it seems it seems trite to say this, but feel what's going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Feel and understand what's going on mm-hmm. because uh, you may not get the chance to do. You may not get the chance to do that again. Live in that moment. Live in the moment. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. And yeah. appreciate where you are. Appreciate where you are. Time. And, you know, I mean, like, I'm lucky. I am lucky to be here talking to you guys today. You what know? I think is interesting about your answer uh-huh. is, as a Christian growing up in church, a Southern Baptist church, I was always asked, if you were to die right now, what would you do? And and so there was always this, like, I would say almost unhealthy obsession with, with constantly yeah. talking about death and what we would yeah. do. And um, if you were to die right now and you would go to heaven, why would you say that you would be able to go in? It's all these things, they rumble off my tongue because I can just, I was conditioned to say them so quickly. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, it's and the so tracks that you passed, passed out at the mall, right? Yeah. Right. All, yes. Yeah. yeah. And they so, all go to that, right? Yeah. And that, that was your experience as well, is that you would pass out these tracks in the mm-hmm. mall and everything. Um, but you're telling a very different story than what I would, what I was under the depression, people would say, um, your answer is enjoy those moments to, to not me. I don't think enjoy is the right word, but to, no, to, actually, to experience no, them. no, actually. Yeah. You would say enjoy? I would say enjoy those moments. And the reason why I say that is because you might be going through hell and I did go mm. through what I can only imagine is, 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 is what people talk about when they say hell. But, um, n- and enjoy those moments because they could they could actually be your last you know um right so there's this sense that like christians maybe when when you believe in an afterlife or when you believe that you're going somewhere and it's going to be amazing you sort of there's a tendency to or, to neglect the life that maybe we, to that not we have. feel it 
to gloss maybe not over feel it, it. Yeah. gloss over it right i was okay so i was told and i i honestly uh i don't have a um i don't have a a gauge for this really i was told that i was very strong that that uh other people could not have done what I did or, or, you know, I mean, I, I got this, I mean, countless times, Mm -hmm. you know, if I were faced with this, I don't, I don't think I could have done what you did, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I don't know how to respond to that in a lot of ways. Um, because when you're faced with it, that's now reality. That's now life. Right. And what choice do you have? I mean, unless you wanna, unless you wanna revel in in how awful it is or how unfair it is, and you know, you potentially your last moments could be you being a, a you know a, a a bitter you know asshole to to everything that happens to you and to everybody that you interact with. Why would you want to do that? Mm-hmm. And so, I mean. I didn't. I didn't go through all of this. Uh, I didn't go through all of this just to say. You know. So I, I. I don't. I'm very cautious of situations that I've not experienced, and I don't want to misrepresent sure. them. You. You will not offend me. Okay. Just I, go. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, what I feel like people do is we tend to romanticize experiences that we've never experienced. And so when it comes to near-death experiences or life-threatening diseases or lethal Well, all I have to do is bite you and you'll get kidney disease. Oh my gosh. Right. Yeah. That's, that's like a superpower, <laughs> right? That's wild, man. That's yeah. cool. That's yeah. you, have you done it to anybody yet? Uh, uh, no comment. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> I just said that I feel like I need, needed some. So we always romanticize situations that we've never lived through or diagnoses that we've never experienced. And so um, they get they get put on a pedestal. And there's almost this idea that we feel that if you're strong enough to get through it, that will project upon you. Well, the reason that you were able to get through it is because you had enough willpower or you had enough gumption to stick with it. And because you kept that, you were able to be cured of your diseases. Would you agree with that? Or would you just say, no, it's just science. I would say, fuck both of those answers. And your answer would be, my answer would be, uh, you, you have, you have to just, you have to just face it. You have to look it in the, in the, in the face, in the eyes, and whatever just, it is, whatever it is, and just accept it. Mm. Like in in a, in a situation like this, or like cancer, or something like that. You know, like uh, it's so much bigger than you. You know, uh, you know the whole. Uh, it could never happen to me. You know that whole thing. Right. Yeah that um, that crossed my mind once. It mm. could never. That's where it stopped. You know, right. It's happening to me. Right. Like, and I mean, I chose to make the best of it. I I don't, I I don't know. I mean, I imagine, of course, there are plenty of other answers to this, but Uh I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's science and I don't think that it's God. You know, in a way it's, and I, and I really resonate with you on that. It's so simple. Yes. Like life, everything. It's just like simple. It's just, we're here. I'm here in this room. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to say that I didn't struggle. Right. Um, I don't, uh, I don't, honestly, what I almost feel like we're going into is the whole. It. All you have to do is ask Jesus in your heart. Mm. But you also have to give your life. So it's almost like saying it's so simple, but simple. What you're saying is that the philosophy is you get whatever comes to you. But what comes to you is sometimes kidney disease. Sure. Sometimes it's the death of your best friend. Right. So it, it, it's simple in the sense of all you got to do is take your life one step at a time. Mm-hmm. But those steps may be huge bounds that right. require death and, right. and whatever. You know, I, earlier I mentioned uh, that, you know, everybody said, you know, Zach, you're so strong. You're so... You know, I could never have done this. And and my response every single time was, I guarantee you, you could. 
Mm, you don't yeah. know what you're capable of until you hit it. You, sure. You do. You don't. You don't right. know. You don't know how strong you are until you have to actually be strong. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this, Zach, because mm-hmm. I, I experienced this with with my life of when I was going through my divorce and my mm-hmm. best friend dying and um, having to fight custody for my son and all of that. I look back at the things I've gone through, and I sometimes get anxiety because I think that I have to go through them again. Mm. But I realize, no, these are things I've already conquered. Do you experience that? In a very realistic way, yes. Because I'm so young mm-hmm. uh, that I will have to I will have to do this again in my lifetime. Do you think that your life is going to have something harder than what you've already gone through? Or do you think you've gone to the hardest stuff already? Absolutely not. No. Um, wait, wait, absolutely not that you... Th- I... I don't think that I've I've encountered the hardest thing. You don't. No, Zach, you almost died. I know. And you've looked at the of the the death of your best friend. I know. You think that there's worse coming for you. Yeah, and I can I can tell you I can tell you almost exactly what I think it's going to be. Okay, shoot. What is it? Uh, I feel like I'm listening to a prophet. This is this is this gonna, is gonna be hard. Uh. So the only reason I'm alive now is because my mom donated her kidney to me. Okay. And I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna react when she when she passes. So your your mom. That is that's I think I, if I had to say that that's probably like the the hardest thing that I think I will ever have to deal with. I understand. So, yeah. I'm sorry to... No, it's okay. No. Get you emotional, but... Um, <laughs> this is good. Uh, I respect that. Yeah, I... You know, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's literally a part of her inside of you. Literally, <laughs> But yeah. also more emotionally. I mean, realistically, you know, she gave me life twice, you know? Wow. So, um, and, and, and they sort of... You know, there's sort of a, a, a triteness about um, a, about that, um, about how they, you know, how they talk about that, you know, how, how, how um, uh, medical, the medical world talks about that. They say, you know, you give life twice and stuff like that. But your mom, is she a, is she a Christian or not? She is. Yeah, she is. I want, uh, before we close, I want to hear how your mom responded to you. Yeah. Coming out as a non-Christian. Um, yeah, she, uh, it was probably one of the most inopportune times that I could have chosen, but, um, like all things, right. When you, when you, when you're trying to talk about things with people, it's never the right time. Right. Uh, so I went over, I had been living on my own for a while and, uh, I, I went over to my mom and stepdad's place for, uh, Christmas Eve dinner. And, um, you know, uh, so I, I, I was the one who led my, my mom to Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so it's, it, I guess that it's even more interesting, but so she's like, uh, she says something like, hey, uh, she's like, you know, how's your life? What's going on? What's, you know, blah, 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 talking to me. And and she's like, you know, hey, I mean, whatever, whatever, you, whatever, what's, whatever's going on, it's all good. You know, hey, I mean, like, as, as long as, as long as you don't, you know, you don't, uh, as long as God's still in your life, as long as you don't, you know, not believe anymore or something like that. And I said, well, actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been there. I understand. Yeah. And I said, uh, you know, I, I don't believe anymore, you know, and, and I'm sorry, you know, I died, but I don't. And, um, my stepdad, uh, he says, yeah, I figured that one out. And, and my mom goes, <laughs> How does your mom respond? and my mom goes, that's okay too. So she's accepting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So your mom, even as an active Christian, yeah. Christian, mm-hmm is treating you as a son. Mm-hmm. A son before a Christian. Mm-hmm. A son before mm-hmm. a Christian. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Shit. That's huge. And she is my hero. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean 
obviously she's your hero, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, she's... You literally, you literally owe your life to a woman who is a Christian, mm-hmm. who was in her mind living out Christian values of treating others the way she wants to be treated, sacrifice, literally sacrificing herself for you. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, you know, not to, not to close on, 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 on a Bible verse, but, uh, you know, there's, uh, <laughs> no greater love, right? Yeah. I respect the hell out of your mom. Um, Zach, I want to thank you so much yeah. for coming today and sharing your story with us. Thanks and for having me. I, this is awesome. This has been a really fun experience. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I want to thank you so much for, for sharing that story with us. And, and I'm, I'm really glad to see some similarities between us of that, uh, with every guest I bring on. And, and I know you're different because you're not somebody from my past life. Sure. You're somebody from Chuck's past life. Mm-hmm. But, but the connection I have with you is the fact that we both lost our best friends at very inopportune times. Mm-hmm. And that it led us to really question things and understand things in a different way than the way that we were brought up. And um, I appreciate that. And I, and I see myself in you, and I, and I hope you see yourself in Chuck and I, and uh, that we're able to kind of like make that connection and see where we're all going with all of this. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Zach. Yep. Thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode of The Life After. Thank you, Zach, for sharing your story. I feel like my takeaway from today's episode is that fear is not a good motivator and it's not a good reason to perpetuate a worldview. Whether it's fear of death or fear of sexuality or fear of the bad things that could happen to you or are happening to you, Zach showed me a level of perseverance, a a, a self-assurance, a certain amount of faith in your own ability to reason look at the world, observe your experiences, and draw conclusions, and then trust those. And I think that's very poignant because in my life, I've only recently recognized all of the ways that fear has held me back and kept me from accomplishing the things that I wanted to do, kept me from following my dreams, and kept me from challenging myself. Fear can even hold us back from compassion. If Zach's mom in the story had given in to whatever fears she might have had, about this procedure and this, uh, this self-sacrifice, Zach might not be with us today. And instead we have this tremendous story of compassion and love and sacrifice. And I think there's a lot of value to that. Thanks for listening. This is The Life After. We'll see you next week.